easy part, I think, for writing fantasy for me is connecting to my characters. That is the probably the most important thing, and I immediately know who my characters are when the idea comes to me. I, just, I don't know how, I just do, it's one of those things. But, and then it's, for me, what takes the most amount of time is figuring out how I'm going to get that character that seems really cool and interesting to like point A from point A to point B. <laughs> like I have to create this whole world where people have to be somewhat believable, even though it's completely, you know, ridiculous. So um, that yeah. So I think creating the characters is easy, and then everything else in between is the hard part. <laughs> That's what I think. I didn't know there were easy parts to it. <laughs> I, I feel like when I'm writing, everything is a struggle, I, you know, and and I think that it results in a better book in the end if, if everything feels like a struggle, if if everything feels like something you know to be worked on, something to be improved. Um, I think that the hardest thing with fantasy is you know suspending you know, your disbelief, making it a world that people can love and understand and fall into, and you know keeping all of those. I don't know, all the little, the little things that don't make sense, just getting everything to line up perfectly really takes a pretty deft hand with revision. I think for me, the easy parts are making up all the wonderful kind of characters and creatures and things like that. And the hard parts would be making up all the characters and creatures and things like that. <laughs> yeah. Because you're kind of straddling that line of, you know, especially when you pull from an existing mythology, like Christine and I both use um, Celtic mythology a lot. So when you're pulling from an existing, there are a lot of people who will kind of get up in arms if you do something that's not in keeping with how they see a character, whether it's Puck or Merlin or, you know, and something like that. So you kind of have to straddle that line of doing something where you feel like you've put your own unique twist on something, but still kind of tapping into what made them fall in love with that character or creature in the first place. And then there's some that I've made up completely, you know, from scratch and things like that. And those are a lot more fun, too, because <coughs> you don't have to do so much fact-checking. That's, that's really makes it nice. I, mean, I wrote historical fiction before this, and I mean, the amount of research I did for that, this was such a relief to just like, you know, I can make it up and nobody can contradict me because <laughs> <laughs> I came completely out of my head. But, um, you know, again, if you go too far with that, it's not believable. And, you know, like Heather says, you need to be able to connect with the characters, even if it's a monster or something, you need to be able to relate or connect with it in some way. So. That's why I, that sounds kind of glib when I started out saying that, but that is the truth. I think that's both the easy and the hard part for me. I, I'm totally lucky. It's very similar. I love to play with it. The magical elements is fun and easy and, and, all, and all of that. But at the same time, I'm a research hound. And so if I am using something that is consistent in the college, you know, I want to know that I'm, I'm right. Plus, I get lost in the research, too. That can always take me, you know, I'll look up one thing about a crossbow and end up hours deep in the internet and it's not all these things in history. And, um, so that's a hazard for me. But, um, but it's awfully fun diving into that magical world. You know, my imagination goes everywhere. So. Uh, what tips do you have for creating fictional cultures, places, and languages? Well, Again, a lot of the, the same research thing, <coughs> for me, it's paralleling something that I can, a foundation of real world, and, and then building it from there. If I make a fictionalized world, which I did in my tween series, that parallels sort of ancient Ireland, I have somewhere to start from, even though it's not Ireland, it's, it's my own world, but it gives it some roots. And, and then I can work up from there and, and use that as a foundation. So I agree with that. Often when I looked over the question thing, I was like kept stumbling over that one. I'm like, how am I going to explain that one? <laughs> and I think you did it so perfectly because it's really how you view it is. You do look at that real world area, what where your book is taking place, and then building on from that. I think that's a perfect way to describe it. I completely agree with all of that as well. And um, in my book, you know, the, the crux of the magical elements are these events with these owls. And I was reading an article about something that happened in Arkansas on New Year's Eve a few years ago. 
and all of these birds mysteriously just fell out of the sky. And people gave all these different explanations for what this could potentially be, you know, sonic boom, lightning at high altitudes. And then there were religious groups, you know, who said, you know, perhaps this was the beginning of, you know, the apocalypse or something like that. So I took a very real situation, or a completely real situation, that really freaked out a lot of people. And I spun off of that. And that was, that's where all the magic in my book comes from. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'd say in my case, if you've ever watched the show Monk, he talks about how it's a blessing and a curse to notice everything all the time. <laughs> and I think that that's true of the majority of writers. You know, it's really difficult not to notice all the little details of things. And so I, I think sometime in my teens, I finally just decided, why not make that work for me? <laughs> and that does help when you're doing the actual world building because you know, someone who walks into a room and only sees a few things, if they're trying to put that room on paper later on and reuse it in the scene somehow, they're only going to you know, have a bare skeleton of a room in there. Whereas someone who comes in and notices, you know, why did someone make the choice to put that particular piece of artwork up there versus something else and stuff like that then you have all those components to do the world building. And so, I mean, it's not like when I'm basing it even on Celtic mythology, um, you know, there's not like a single canon that I'm drawing from. You know, there's all kinds of little tidbits that I've read here and there, and somebody else did something with this. And then um, we got to go, my husband and I got to go to England, Ireland, and Scotland this year. And I really was expecting to connect with a lot of the places there. And in some ways, I did connect the way I thought I would. In other ways, some things were completely unexpected for me, so that was great because now I have almost both point of views. If I go to write about that, I have the person who went there with no expectation and was surprised by all these things, and also someone who maybe um, understands, okay, well, this is how the caves are formed and stuff like that. So, you know, you take all of that and that becomes part of the world building. Okay, what nonfiction books or blogs help you as a writer? When I first started writing, uh, actually, when I really sat down and said to myself, I'm going to write a book, I'm, you know, this, this is going to happen, I really still, no matter how much I had read in the past or at that moment, I still didn't know how to write one. I didn't know the proper punctuations, you know, there's still things that were very, I just wasn't sure about. Um, and I went to Barnes Noble and I found this series called Write Great Fiction. And it was the, what I love about it is that it's very, Simple. I mean, you just it just it's work for you. Just it's so easy to understand. There's not all this other background of why or whatever like this. It just was straight to the point, and I need that. I need it to be just tell me how to do it. I don't want to know all this other stuff. Just tell me everything else. You know, the bullet points, and that's basically what this series does. It's a bullet point of every little thing that you need to understand and wrap your mind around in order to create something. And I picked up every single book I could out of that series, and it was amazing. Probably the best thing that I've done for my writing. So it's like the exact opposite of an MFA program. <laughs> yeah, where you spend the entire semester on something. <laughs> exactly. I just was like, no, I need. I mean, because of my attention, I mean, I can't pay attention that much to nonfiction. Is very hard. I'm. I can't read nonfiction. So when I found these books, I was like, this is perfect. This is what I need. Um, and it was. It worked out perfectly. For me, so I absolutely go with write great fiction. I read so many books on writing, especially now, you know, because I think once you have a book, you know, coming out soon, it's like, you know, how do I, how do I improve, how do I keep getting better? So in the last year, I just started reading everything I could get my hands on. Um, Mary Cole is an agent. It's K O L E, and she has a great book on writing Kidlet. She has a, There's a specific chapter where she talks about how um, there's a scene in The Perks of Being a Wallflower where Charlie says. Um, we were infinite, and how every YA book needs a similar scene like that. And I don't know, a lot of that book really spoke to me, and it's something that I you know, continue to apply and continue to learn from. Um, Cheryl Klein is another YA editor. She has a very good book. Um, she worked on the Harry Potter series. She's with, um, uh, she's with Scholastic. Uh, that's, a, that's an excellent book. I also really recommend Save the Cat. It's a screenwriting book. <laughs> uh, just the simple beats, just to learn how to plot out of the book. It's really fantastic. And then I always say that Nathan Bransford, his blog, taught me everything I know about the business. That's right. <laughs> his blog. I did go to his blog a lot. 
I read a lot of different blogs, but if you don't want to take the time to read everything, that's, that's a <laughs> great resource. <laughs> with Mark is. I was just thinking now that you said that, as far as, I mean, reading, I think now that after reading the Right Great Fiction series, um, now reading specifically young adult, which is what I write, that's what I do. I think I read so many books last year, and going off what Jessica was saying, the more I read with that to that teaches me a lot in what mm -hmm. the category that I write to, that helps a lot significantly actually. Just knowing what the different, you know, um, styles and what people are writing about now, and, and even just the characters and the book development, the world building, all of that, I learn a lot from just reading. Um, there's some books that I like by K.M. Wieland, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing her name, but it's W-E-I-L-A-N-D. She has some books on outlining, and uh, they're really helpful once you've kind of gotten partway into a book in particular, because you usually will get stuck at around page 50, <laughs> everybody does. That's where you've sort of used up your momentum that got you excited about writing the book and you're into the actual real work of it, and you realize that this is hard. <laughs> So it helps with that. Um, also, uh, Donald Moss, which he teaches workshops too that are great that Christina did attend, so I'll let her talk a little bit about that if she wants to. But as far as the online stuff, um, there are some great blogs and websites. Uh, one called Query Shark, which is mm -hmm. Janet Reed, who's an agent, and she basically uh, breaks down people's queries, what works, what doesn't. Um, you know, what you don't need to have in there and things like that. And so that's a really helpful one. There's also a forum called Absolute Right, and it's the water cooler is the actual forum. So if you're looking for actual critique, I really recommend Absolute Right. <coughs> they have it all broken down by age groups, um, genres, all that stuff. So that's, you know, you're going to be working with people who are also in your same genre, which is very helpful because, I mean, mechanics are one thing, but things like tropes that are very specific to fantasy, to romance, and things like that. They're going to you know, call you on it if you're not doing it well enough, or it's been done a million times before, and here you thought you had this wonderful original idea, but you didn't. <laughs> so things like that, that Absolute Right is really great for. Um, the other one I would recommend is Janice Hardy has a website called Fiction University. And she does do critiques of people's work. You can submit like your opening page and she'll critique it for you and stuff. But she also just does tons of blog posts that are, you know, everything from like how to build characters, how to do your setting, you know, things like that. So she really has, you know, books worth of stuff on her own website. And uh, there are a lot of contests out there too that even if you're not going to enter them, they can be really useful. Um, Operation Awesome does Mystery Agent every month and we now set it up so you can actually critique in the forum. And what's good about that is like we talked about, um, when an agent sees the same concept over and over again in these contests, you'll see 50 pitches all together and you'll start to see which ones sound the same, which one jumps out at you, what did they do with that wording to make theirs stand out from all the other you know, queries that were for a middle grade book and stuff like that. So that is really helpful too to just go and see a whole bunch of these pitches all in one place where you can really compare them. structure and it's great. Um, Larry Brooks has story physics too, goes into the whole concept and the premise of your story, making sure that you're solid.